it's easy to make enemies in this world. But yeah, it's it's pretty prevalent. I tell mo- I, I'm very much pro police. I just I am, um, and I've worked with a lot of law enforcement polygraph examiners. And the downside is it's things just like that. You know, a polygraph pretest interview is just that. It's supposed to be an interview, and that's it. If I knew the answer, I wouldn't need you to come and take a test, okay? So I don't know if you're guilty or if you're innocent, so it doesn't help the situation for me to treat you like we've got our guy, and I just need to give them the data that supports it, because that's not how it works. But, yes. So we're going to get to some of that here in a minute, but no, I, my, my advice would be not to have any kind of conversation with your client about how to take a polygraph. I promise you, anything you tell them to do is going to cause them to fail a polygraph. Not because I'm going to do it, because you've got to have a much deeper understanding of how it works to know that that would not work at all. Yeah, I, I mean, all you're doing is putting a mental block that's going to absolutely cause trouble for that person. What they have to do is be okay with the fact that they're going to be a little freaked out because that's normal. Yes. Well, you don't. Um, first of all, like I said, every person is going to be nervous, every single one of them. And the theory behind it is the guy who's lying is going to be clearly give more response because he is nervous for that reason. Exactly. You did. So we ask multiple types of questions. All you ever see when you get my report is what? Three to four relevant questions. That's it. But there's a lot of other questions that are going to be in a polygraph that I use to try to find your baseline. You know? Um, it's, it's set up exactly that way. And again, we could be here a really long time trying to teach polygraph, but I think that the biggest problem defense attorneys have is when it comes to preparing people to take a polygraph because the true answer is you don't. Don't try to prepare them. What you say is we're going to get you to take a polygraph because if you can pass a polygraph, it's going to help your case tremendously. Don't go and research anything about the polygraph. It's just going to mess with your head. And it will. I promise you. The, the few things that they're going to read on the Internet are going to be the very thing that's going to cause the inconclusives or the false positives and things like that. Um, if you look on the internet, yes. Uh, if you look on the internet, you're going to find things like breathing techniques. So here's where things go wrong in that area, okay? If you're doing anything, and I mean anything, to physically control the outcome of the test, it's called a countermeasure, okay? And just by the nature of what you're doing, you're being deceptive because the truthful person would not try to counter the test. And my job is to convince them that it's okay to be nervous, that's normal. Because, believe me, there are people that come in who've done nothing wrong and they're deathly afraid of the polygraph. Okay. So, uh, I'm not talking about using that kind of thing during the test, but for that matter... You mean just ways to calm them down before? Yeah, if they're not doing something while they're taking the test, sure, whatever. Yeah, yeah people do yoga, do well, I mean, whatever. whatever. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I have attorneys that come and hold their client's hand sometimes. I mean, not during the test, but just whatever it takes to, to try to calm them down and assure them that everything's going to be okay. Yeah, all that stuff's fine. I'm, I'm talking specific, yes, before. Absolutely. I'm talking about specifically during the test. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to just, you're at the mercy of, I mean, you're at the mercy of the polygraph. You have to just let everything happen naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. 
right? So I suspect, again, I haven't seen it. I, I, don't, I think I've done lots of work for you too. Yeah. Um, the, the, the problem is probably not that question alone. So I suspect they're asking, asking three to four relevant questions around that, that crime. You know, all about shooting that guy. Uh, were you present when he was shot? Did you have any involvement in the shooting of blah, blah, blah? Um, you know, being the driver, the getaway, being part of who put it together. So there's, a, there's more, uh, here again, detection of deception, not lie. You may not have lied on that question, but to the target issue, which is were you involved in the murder of such and such, they're probably all five lies. If, if in fact that that was. So these four were not involved in the crime at all? He sucks. So, so somebody asked a question a while ago about people saying people failed, and I said I'm not going to give out any agency names. I leave it at that. Um, <laughs> yes. I don't know where they're doing their polygraph set. I've not actually, they've been over to mine, but I haven't been over to theirs. I don't know. Yeah. I, I know that the reputation is not strong over there with polygraph. But listen, I mean, reputation is as simple as I like you, I don't like you. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the, I, I do all the time. Yeah. I do. I, I do. I'll tell you what happens with the Harris County Sheriff's Department. So I contract with them. I do all their criminal cases and internal affairs cases. Um, and so often, guys will come from defense attorneys who are using other polygraphers. Uh, you guys may know John Schwartz. He's been around for a long time. You know, we'll get polygraphs from him or um, other local polygraph examiners. And I look at them, and here's the deal. I don't want to shame my own profession. So I'm not going to go out there bashing polygraph examiners. If they're doing good work, I'm, I'm going to accept it. It doesn't benefit me at all to say that a guy's polygraph work is not good. So, yeah, it happens quite a bit. Um, defense attorneys send me people all the time who failed a, an agency polygraph. That happens frequently. Um, yeah, and the biggest problem with the agency polygraphs, and again, I'm pro-police big time, but I'm going to tell my defense attorneys, don't send your people to the agency to take a polygraph, period. Just don't do it. Um, because chances are high, not always, but, you know, are you going to be that time or are you not? Um, it's going to be more of an interrogation. Or are you going to be talked to like you're the scum of the earth, which makes you think that this person thinks you're guilty of the crime. And that's just bad news for a polygraph. It's not going to probably turn out real well. Here's the bottom line. If you think that I think you did it, you're not going to pass my polygraph. And so it's just as much part of my job to have you realize that I don't know the answer. It's up to you whether you pass or fail. And, if, and I'm ready to believe that you're telling the truth. And that's part of my job. And I think that we missed that part with agencies. Not all of them, but definitely with some of them. Um, I, I would never be okay with just accepting the fact that my client failed the police polygraph. Maybe they did. And maybe they just failed because they did something wrong. But maybe there was other things going on. So I, you like look at their side of the graph? Sure. Yeah, here's what I can tell you. Um, what, if I look at the charts, what I can tell you is if by the numbers, this person failed the polygraph, was inconclusive, or passed. And often enough, that's not even accurate when I look at some of them. You know, people will be called passing who failed miserably, um, and people have, you know, passed who, fa or who failed, or vice versa, you know. Um, so, yeah, I would. What really tells the story, though, is if I can see, particularly with, with agency, um, most of them, not all of them, I know Harris County doesn't, um, they don't video their polygraphs, but for those who either video or audio, that really tells me what's going on that I can't see on paper, how you're talking to this guy. Um, well, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example, and this came from a private examiner. Uh, there was a lady, she was a teacher, I believe she was almost 70 years old still teaching, um, and she went to do a polygraph after uh, 
young girl accused her of touching her inappropriately. Um, this was a disciplinary problem. The little girl didn't like her. Um, so she went privately to take a polygraph. Um, that, well, it was done for the police agency, but through a contracted private polygraph examiner. Um, and, and what I was able to get after she failed miserably that polygraph is I got a transcript. And just reading the language alone, I couldn't believe that any police officer, polygraph examiner, would talk to a 70-year-old woman the way that he did. And it was no wonder, just from the language, I said, of course she didn't pass. You know, of course she didn't. Um, so I gave her a polygraph again, and I told her from the get-go, what I did not do was go and bash this other polygraph examiner. What I said was, we're going to pretend like it did, didn't happen, it didn't exist, and what I don't know is that you did or you didn't. But I choose to believe you didn't, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to show me that. And we carried on that way. Um, she passed easily, actually. Um, so it happens. And there's not a, much defense except to have another polygraph done. A failed polygraph, trust me, requires at a, a past polygraph to at least counter, you know. We want zero, worst case scenario, we don't want a failed polygraph. And we certainly don't want to have to go into some kind of grand jury with a failed polygraph and that's all you've got. Um, so that's really the only way to counter it is take them to somebody. And I pray you could not find somebody who you could simply pay to pass your person on a polygraph. Or however, I'm sure they exist. I know they do. Anyway, any more questions? Did that actually answer the question? All right, I rambled. Yes, ma'am. So I have uh, two civil judges particularly, more than two, but these two a lot, who will stop things in the middle of a, usually a divorce hearing or custody battle, and they'll send parents to me. I hate it. Um, we're just talking about that outside. I hate doing anything civil with a passion. If you look on my website, it even says I do not do civil work, period. I'd rather have it given up for my competition. But when a judge calls you, you just don't. Not a good idea to say so I don't. But so yes, if that answers your question, I'm not sure if it's the type of test you're talking about, but. but no, yeah. I was wondering why in uh, criminal judge. I, I haven't. I, I don't think criminal judges are, I mean, they, they want to hear case law to support you know, doing that. Now, you're just not gonna find a lot of case law to support it. So no, I, I personally have not had that happen to me. Um, let's, uh, no. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Sure. Mm -hmm. <coughs> sure. <laughs> um, I'm, I run, I'm going to give you a guess here, I run probably six or seven hundred a year, and I might get. 20, 20 inconclusives. I think I have a really low inconclusive rate. It's it's the easy thing to do to say inconclusive and blame the client. It's not really the way I like to do it. Um, you know, we're, we are required to run a minimum of two charts, but we are allowed to run as many as five. And if I need it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna call you up and say, hey, your client was inconclusive, I'm going to have exhausted all that I could do to get them through it. Um, I bet you took your test prior to 1988. Yes. Lots of things have changed since 1988. Oh yeah. Well, the the rules and regulations have improved the most. First of all, you have to be educated to be a polygraph examiner. You have to take continuing education to learn about your craft, um, and you can't chart roll. So that guy who tested you, if I do five tests in a day, I'm swamp busy because um, it's going to take me an average probably an hour and a half. Some tests take three hours. It depends on what I'm doing, what kind of test I'm doing. Um, your guy probably had you in and out of there in 30 minutes and probably had 15 more after you that day uh, if I was a bit. So there was somewhere in the ballpark of 20 or 30,000 polygraph examiners. Um, I don't know the number. There were thousands of polygraph examiners prior to 1988. And after and now there are two or 300. So statewide. Well, the state. 
Texas? Texas. This state, state of Texas, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's by what regulatory TDLO. Um, it, it, used to, it used to be that they had uh, um, the board of polygraph examiners, and that was abolished in two, not just but at three or four years ago. Um, 2011, I believe. And TDLO has taken over. And Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Um, but a lot of the rules are kind of coming out in, I guess, in, in this thing. Not, every single thing that I'm talking to you kind of comes from those rules. So there's not anything I do besides have a bubbly personality uh, that isn't required to do uh, in regulations of polygraph. Know the local culture. So here's something that's really, really important. If I was to ask you guys to raise your hand for all of you who believe in polygraph, I bet at least a half or three-fourths would not raise your hand, okay? And if you're asking, if that's how you're doing your business, why well, I don't believe in polygraph, you're doing quite a disjustice to your, to your clients or a disservice. And I'll tell you why. Because that detective believes in it. More importantly, those members of the grand jury believe in it. And that's, not you, that's who's going to decide whether that case gets no build or not, okay? That tech detective is gonna de oftentimes decide how far that case goes, if it goes at all. So we wanna know what they believe in, and I'll tell you that they simply do. Um, the average person out there in the world doesn't know anything about polygraph except that it exists and it works. Trust me, I get those calls every single day. <clears throat> Where does it work best? Cases with little to no physical evidence. The reality is polygraph can be like gold when you've got